Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Continuing our series on the work entitled The Quran and Christian Commentary, we have noted that this book has perpetuated some serious misconceptions as well as outright lies about the Quran and the religion that emerges from it, the religion of Al-Islam. And so we have looked at, in previous discussions, the issue of different versions of the Qur'an, as well as the issue of praying to the Prophet. Now we are looking at something which has been perpetuated by media and political bodies, a notion that is quite terrifying, rightfully so, and that notion is that the religion of Islam is a religion that is aggressive in nature. Thus, it is written in, in this particular book, In fighting, the believers are to kill the infidels, strike their necks, and strike their necks. While one is supposed to kill only for justifiable reasons, the Quran refers to polytheism as a greater evil than killing, and thus instructs killing polytheists wherever they are caught. It also commands the believers to kill the people of the book, the hypocrites, and those who do not want peace. While a few verses mandate fighting and killing only in self-defense, the vast majority of warfare references are read as an open call, universal and timeless. So there are other problematic statements in this paragraph, but that is the ones that, that we are looking at right now. Now, these statements that are recorded here are at best half-truths. And it seems that what has happened is they've been put together with a deliberate agenda to present Islam as a faith of murdering savages, that, that, it, teach, that it teaches us that we must, be upon, we must be intent upon conquest and intent upon destruction. Now, the verses that have been cited by, this, by the author of this particular insertion themselves refute the argument that they have, they have advanced. So we are going to look at three Quranic references that were cited in this particular work. So, first reference is from the Quran, chapter 2, verse 191. Again, chapter 2, verse 191. That has been cited by this author to prove that a general massacre of polytheists is ordered by the Qur'an. However, that verse must be read in connection with the verse that comes before. And this is a general rule of the Qur'an. That if you want to have a better idea of what the Qur'an is teaching, then you must look at the context in which the, t in which the particular assertion is given. So, we are going to look at these verses in English. It reads, And fight in the cause of God, those who fight you, yet be not aggressive. Indeed, God does not love, love those who are aggressive. The, the context is clearly defensive and clearly of a limited nature. It reads, Next, And slay them where you catch them, expel them from where they expelled you. So the context is war. The context is re recovering that which is unjustly taken away. For example, homes which are unjustly taken away. It is a context of war. Again, it is a context of war. Not a command to wage war on non-Muslims simply because of their religious identity. And even verse 192 that comes re immediately after this. That verse tells us that if the enemy stops the, their aggression, their activities, then know that God is forgiving and merciful. The next text that was cited by the author is from chapter 4, verse 80. It's cited twice. But if the context is studied, it is clear that it's talking about particular forces that are known in the Muslim history as the hypocrites who had abandoned their duties while pretending to uphold them. And this is a, a reference to a particular battle, the Battle of Uhud. 
And even with that said, verse 90, the very next verse in the, in the cited text, tells us that even with the specific group, there were exceptions. That believers were not to fight them because there were still hopes of rec reconciliation and that there were also groups that had already entered into treaties with the believers. Now, about this notion that Islam commands people to fight, it commands people to kill, etc., it should be noted that the Qur'an already commands against murder. Chapter 17, verse 33. And there is nothing in that verse, again, chapter 17, verse 33, there's nothing in that verse that says that you can kill uh, non-Muslims. It is a general command that you're not to kill any soul which God has made inviolable. In other words, God has made every soul, regardless of religious identity, God has made their soul special and their life is not to be taken. The Quran also says in chapter 5 verse 32, the same thing that is given in the Bible, is that if a soul is killed, it is if all of humanity is killed. And if a soul is saved, if a life is saved, then as if all humanity has been saved. So murder is a serious crime, regardless of the religious identity of the victim. Finally, I want to come to what the author has referred to in his work. And the author writes that the Quran refers to polytheism as a greater evil than killing. This is what the author has written. Now, the exact Arabic phrase that is being referenced here is, as I said in Arabic, وَالْفِتْنَةُ أَكْبَرُ مِنُ الْقَاتِرُ Again, وَالْفِتْنَةُ أَكْبَرُ مِنُ الْقَاتِرُ now, this term fitna, it is true that some commentators, such as Ibn Kathir, have understood the, understood the word fitna to reference shirk, or worshipping something other than God, or worshipping something in addition to God. It is true that Ibn Kathir, among some others, have made that assertion. However, that is not the linguistic meaning of the word fitna. And anyone who knows Arabic, as well as several of the other Muslim languages, knows this is, this is the case, that fitna carries the meaning of trial, of chaos, of turmoil, of problems. This is the, this is the general meaning that, it's, that, it, that this word fitna carries. And if this statement, which is again is in chapter 2, verse 217, if this statement is read in context, we see that what's being said is that Societal chaos, that this is what is being referenced, that the societal chaos is more destructive than even a single murder or a single death. And again, anyone who knows Arabic, who knows this word fitna, will recognize the truth of this statement. So, we see that what this work has done has attempted to misrepresent the Holy Quran. And so I urge all viewers, especially our non-Muslim friends, especially our Christian friends, to not take the word of this particular book when it comes to Islam. I urge you sincerely, strongly, to read the Quran for yourself. There are a number of good translations of the Qur'an and good commentaries of the Qur'an in the Arabic language. The most popular one is the Yusuf Ali translation. It has a commentary, it has an index. This would be ideal for any reader. Another very good one, good uh, translation and commentary, is the Muhammad Asad translation, which is called The Message of the Qur'an. Again, the translator and commentary, the translation and commentary is by Muhammad Asad. This is a very good, enlightening 
translation and commentary on the Holy Quran. So please don't depend upon those who have an agenda of misrepresenting. Rather, my advice to you would be to read the text for yourself in the way that Muslims read it, at least in the sense that has been explained by reliable sources. Thank you very much, and may God's peace be upon you.